history of Hacienda Airlines. Wisconsin farmer and syndicated columnist Warren Doc Bailey owned three Hacienda hotels in California when he took over construction of the Lady Luck and renamed it Hacienda. The budget South End Resort on Highway 91 opened in 1956 as the only strip resort that catered to families and low rollers. With a go-kart track and large pool instead of an elegant restaurant with nationally known headliner entertainers. An effort that earned the property the title of Hayseed Heaven. Locals said you can either go to Las Vegas or to the Hacienda. Casino executives thought that the Hacienda would struggle because of its remote location and not catering to high rollers. Warren Bailey was open to trying different ideas to market his resort, including breaking the flight endurance record of 50 days in the air without landing. Bob Tim and John Cook broke the record by 14 days, but the PR stunt wasn't that successful because the press would not mention or show the Hacienda name in their reports. Bailey had no experience with airlines when he decided to operate his own airline and offer an all-inclusive package that was called Hacienda Holiday or Champagne Tour. The package included a free room, dinner, drinks, and casino chips, among other things. For flights from Los Angeles, the evening tour cost about $27, would leave L.A. at 3 and 6 p.m., and would return to L.A. at about 3 a.m. The overnighter included a free room for about $35, and the weekender included two free nights for about $44. Five-night packages were also available. Hacienda advertised heavily in Southern California and flew out of six California cities. Flights were also available from Chicago, Cleveland, Detroit, New York, and St. Louis, starting at $188. Well before the California casino existed downtown and started catering to Hawaiians, Hacienda was flying from Honolulu. This is the Hacienda general manager, Dick Taylor, and his wife, Charlene, with passengers in Hawaii. In December 1960, Life magazine followed Don and Betty Hammond of Los Angeles on their champagne tour, and the evening tour started on the flight to Las Vegas. Hollywood actor Dick Winslow played tunes on the piano and sang popular songs during the flights, mainly to calm nervous passengers who had never flown before, which was common in the 1950s. Young women walked down the aisle as part of an in-flight fashion show for the passengers who were mostly male. Contrary to rumor and claims in the book Greenfelt Jungle, the ladies never performed strip teases, but they did wear lingerie, including nearly transparent baby doll nightgowns. When the Hammonds arrived in Las Vegas, they got a limousine ride to the Hacienda, $5 in casino chips, a free buffet dinner, a drink, and a show. They also got a free round of golf at the night-lit nine-hole par-3 golf course with clubs provided, and four chances to win $5,000 if they made a hole-in-one at the Hacienda driving range. The Hacienda would break even on the flights and make their profits on the gambling, but Don and Betty Hammond won $20 on the slots and roulette before boarding a flight back to Los Angeles at around 2 a.m. Each passenger on the way home got a free bottle of champagne, and at the time, the Hacienda Corporation was the largest consumer of champagne in California. The initial plane fleet included two Douglas DC-3s, one DC-4, and five Lockheed Super Constellations, while some other planes were leased from other airlines. Eventually, the fleet expanded to about 30 planes. The cost of the package was the same or cheaper than a flight on the commercial airlines. Hacienda Airlines was so successful that by 1961, the Hacienda fleet brought 140,000 visitors to McCarran Airport, more than all of the commercial airlines combined. Because of this, TWA, Western Airlines, and United Airlines didn't like Hacienda's success, and the other strip casinos didn't like what the Hacienda was doing either. One executive said, 
We are also going to be in trouble if we couple booze with gambling and gimmick-style promotions and toss in $5 for lure. That puts us in a class of Sin City USA, an identification we have successfully avoided for five years. The casino executives also didn't like that the Hacienda was catering to low rollers and the middle class with what was essentially a free flight. Back in January 1957, the Associated Press reported that the Civil Aeronautics Board has launched a formal investigation of the Hacienda. A complaint by the CAB Office of Compliance said that since October 19, 1956, Hacienda has held itself out to the public in advertisements, signs, and pamphlets as offering daily evening in Las Vegas service from Burbank to Las Vegas and return. The complaint said Hacienda has engaged in interstate air transportation as an indirect air carrier without certificate authority. A year later, on February 19, 1958, the Civil Aeronautics Board determined that even though Hacienda Airlines operates at a loss, its services are for compensation or higher. Hotel patrons constitute such a considerable portion of the public that services exclusively offered such patrons are deemed to be in common carriage. Moreover, evidence shows transportation services are not restricted to hotel patrons. Since Hacienda is without operating authority, its operations are in violation of Section 401 of the Federal Aviation Act. Hacienda owner Warren Bailey said that he applied for a certificate to operate a commercial airline, but the Aeronautics Board said that the paperwork was lost in their office and it wasn't found until 1962. But even with their certificate, the Federal Aviation Act of 1958 provides for a broad economic regulation of air transportation. The Civil Aeronautics Board is under an affirmative statutory duty to exercise its regulatory powers so as to foster sound economic conditions, promote economical and efficient service at reasonable charges, and avoid destructive competitive practices. Hacienda was not allowed to operate an airline because the resort had an unfair economic advantage compared to commercial airlines which can't offer free hotel rooms or other inducements. Two years later, on August 12, 1960, the Civil Aeronautics Board ordered that the Hacienda cease and desist from engaging directly or indirectly in air transportation on or after midnight Eastern Time, October 11, 1960. The Hacienda didn't think that it was running an airline because the passengers fly for free. What the passengers are paying for is room and board at the hotel. Hacienda requested a stay of the order until they could appeal in federal district court because Hacienda would be required to disperse some $63,000 monthly under its fixed obligations on idle planes and equipment and to its employees, pending final review of the case. The stay was granted by the board until 10 days after the reviewing court shall issue any mandate or judgment affirming such order. The Dunes also had been operating their own airline packages, but they stopped their flights after the order. About a year later, on June 29, 1961, during the federal court case, the United States Senate Aviation Subcommittee was meeting to amend the 1958 Federal Aviation Act. The president of a regional airline that competes with Hacienda for the same route from Burbank to Las Vegas said, You see, one of the hotels, Hacienda, has six large airlines flying. CAB has brought enforcement action against them, but they have not been able to do anything. They have been operating for three or four years. What we want to do as a supplemental scheduled airlines was to do the same thing practically as Hacienda today, and we proposed it back in 1955, one year before the Hacienda opened to go ahead and operate the same kind of flight as an airline, what we call a package tour. The Aviation Subcommittee Chairman responded by saying, This brings up an important point. You say this one hotel, Hacienda, has been able to run its own airline for four years? Blatz replied, Between three and four years. The Chairman continued by saying, I think the committee must seriously consider economic penalties so that those who violate the rules can be hauled before the board and fined.
rather than have their license revoked and go through all the legalistic delaying procedures that could allow a non-certificated or non-authorized airline to continue to operate for years. The Hacienda lost their case in federal district court, but appealed to the United States Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit. For the Civil Aeronautics Board, the sole issue was economic regulation. Safety was in no way involved. The Federal Appeals Court did recognize that Hacienda's tour flights have received widespread public acceptance because the service is unique. Flights operate at off hours when the scheduled carriers do not fly. They require no government subsidy, and Hacienda has found that many persons are introduced to air transportation for the first time. But on January 16, 1962, the Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit ruled against Hacienda, saying, The Federal Aviation Act would be ineffective indeed if its economic regulations could be avoided simply by selling transportation only in combination with something else and calling it free. The board was not compelled to adopt such a self-defeating construction of the statute. The evident congressional purpose was to provide for regulation of the furnishings of transportation by air to the general public on a commercial basis. The board's interpretation of for compensation or higher, according to the court, makes effective economic regulation possible by bringing within the regulatory scheme all those who compete in the commercial market in the business of offering air transportation to the public generally. Hacienda Airlines stopped flying on July 10, 1962, but under the aviation rules, Hacienda was able to offer a limited amount of hotel packages through chartered flights that weren't readily available to the general public, like scheduled flights from commercial airlines. Nevada U.S. Senator Howard Cannon introduced the Airline Deregulation Act on February 6, 1978, and it was signed into law by President Jimmy Carter on October 24. The Deregulation Act dissolved the Civil Aeronautics Board by 1984, and by 1983, the airlines had no restrictions on routes that they could fly, prices, or providing new services. The Department of Transportation and Federal Aviation Administration took over the remaining regulatory authority and safety standards. Mm -hmm.